Hello, my name is Elizabeth and we are going to take a look at the We Are Memory Keepers Foil Quill Cordless Pen. I purchased it on HS and Craft Day in March of 2021 uh, and it was on extended delivery and I just received it a few days ago. So I was very excited to play with it and learn how to use it. I am a complete newbie when it comes to foil. I could not find anything about this pen. Uh, evidently they make a pen that has USB attachments to it. You plug it into USB and you do it that way. I don't remember seeing that so I must have totally missed when that came out because I do remember when the attachment for your electronic cutting machine came out, the company said, well, if it does any damage, you've voided the warranty and that. So I never did anything. So when I saw this on HSN Craft Day, I was very excited because I thought, oh, this is exactly what I was waiting for. So finally I have it. And being a complete newbie, I really didn't know but I did watch some of the videos for those other pins that plug in to the USB. Um, I figured that was the only thing that's really different um, with this heat transfer foil. The pin is the pin. Now, when you buy the pin, and I've already taken it out of the package, so it's no unboxing, sorry about that. So when you buy the pin, you get the pin with two um, little tips there. One is narrow, one is wide. You need to put batteries in it, uh, AAA batteries, only takes two. And you also get this roll of foil. Now with the HSN package, it came with these other two packs of foil, Flamingo and Peacock. So and let's see, I don't see how many. I think there's several sheets in there. So you get this and it also came, um, yeah, I'm sorry. So this is what it came with, it's the HSM pack. I believe that was it. Then they had two other, um, and as I said, I've got these open. I kind of forget which part came with which, but I've got some envelopes um, and card backs here, card bases that it came with um, either with that pack or with the two um, extra packs that they had available. Let me get these for you. Uh, they had two extra packs that you could buy um, and they came with stencils and more foil sheets. I see they're both gold uh, stencils and then some tracing sheets so you can trace onto your foil um, the, the design and it comes through. So you have that. Now last night before I went to bed I was really very excited about it and wanted to um, play with it. So I did, although uh, so I'm, I'm still a total newbie, but it actually turned out to be very easy. Um, I decided to use the Flamingo foil. And since I was using the Flamingo foil, I found one of my Flamingo stamps. And so I, I put it on, you can see here, I used some washi tape to put the foil onto the card front. Then I stamped and I think I, this is what I happen to have out, and I use this, and I stamp onto the foil, and then I use that as my tracing line, and I held it just like a pen, and there are sometimes, and I'm left-handed, so everything is kind of backwards and upside down. So I'll show you really quick. I was very pleased with how this came out, and mind you, this was my very first attempt at foiling. So it is hard to see in the camera, but I think it came out very well for my first time 
um, not really knowing exactly what I was doing. Uh, but I decided the card needs a little extra oomph and I may put uh, something else there. But I thought in line with foiling, I would add something to the corner. So I'm going to put this back on. And we'll see if my pin has been heating long enough. Now it does get very hot. When you turn it on, there's a red light that shows. So I'm going to wait a minute or two for it to heat up and then we'll be back. The pen has heated up and several years ago I went through all of my red rubber stamps and cleaned them out, gave a bunch away, and those that I kept, I took them off the wood mount and mounted on cushions so I could use them with an acrylic block. However, there are some that I kept. This stamp was the very, very first rubber stamp I ever got. I was a scrapbooker, still am, um, but buying this rubber stamp kind of led me to the dark side and I have had a lot of fun. So I keep that. But I have or had many corner stamps and evidently I decided I wasn't going to do corner border stamps anymore because I couldn't find the ones I was thinking of. So I took a piece of paper and I drew a little border. So let's see if I'm going to screw up what I have or if I'm going to add to it. Now, I had planned at first to put a little corner on, design on the opposing corners. Uh, but since I was waiting for it to heat up, I have rethought that and I'm only going to do one corner because I think I may want to put a sentiment or something down here and I don't want it to interfere with the corner design. And this is mostly experimental, so we'll see. Okay, now I hope you can see um, I am left-handed, so I should probably have the camera on my other side. But I am not a professional or even semi-professional video teaching person. Uh, so I hope this first time you'll forgive me. So here goes. You don't have to put a lot of pressure on, but some. I'm holding down the paper and I'm putting probably medium pressure. I'm following my line. I made it simple. I had a little goof there. So Let's see what we've got. And I don't have anything. So I am thinking the paper was too thick to transfer. I see some little thing there. I can see my transfer. Okay, since I'm keeping it simple, how about I just freehand it and don't worry about this. So here goes. Let's see what we get. And I have a bit of a indentation that I can see. So let's go. added a little S 
pretty cute there at the end. Aha! Came out. Okay, so this paper, this is with regular notebook paper. And evidently it's too thick or I did not put enough pressure on it, perhaps. I'll do some more experimenting. So let's take a look. Very simple. Mm, there. So just a simple little curly cue. Um, my border stamp probably would have been a lot better. This is experimenting. I love to experiment. So when I do finish this card, I will probably put a sentiment in a little banner at the bottom and we'll see. But I'd say this was pretty successful. Now, when I did the flamingo, I had stamped him on. And so I traced completely through the foil. I did not have. Now this, these trace alongs, whatever they call them, and these papers, um, Trying to tell, I feel perhaps a little bit thinner than regular copy paint paper, which I had sitting here from my printer, regular printer paper. Um, so they does feel. So I can play around with that, but I think for now, just showing you a stamp onto the paper and then tracing the foil on it. And this is what we get. You can see, I was very excited when it came out this way. And when I did that little curly cue this now, um, going straight through the foil turned out to be better than tracing on paper. Now, this paper, let's see. Let's go ahead and experiment with that and see what happens. Um, we'll figure it out. So let's get another card base. This is an ivory one. And let's try the peacock. Um, well, it's the pin. The tip does get very hot. Don't touch the tip. One thing I wanted to mention, um, this foil quill package, it says peacock and you'll notice there are five different colors included. That's what they call the peacock. And then in the flamingo, there are five different colors also included in the flamingo pack. So what I did was I have taken one of these trace alongs, I think that's what they call it. There are instructions that come with it. I glanced at them. <laughs> and so I cut something out. Live, love, explore. And I have taken some washi tape and taped it down onto the blue foil and then the card and the foil onto my mat. So Let's see what we get with this. Remember when I did the curly cue on traced on regular printer paper, it didn't work. Now I don't know if that was because maybe I didn't put enough pressure. I can do another experiment with that sometime. But let's see what we get with this. I've gone through the love. 
Now I'm not sure that I'm smart enough to talk while I'm concentrating on the tracing. So that's what I'm doing. Let's, now I'm going to do this little curly cue here. It looks pretty. Okay, so I have the first one done. Now I think perhaps I can check and see how well I've done without messing up the alignment of the rest. Um, let's see if we can pull back a corner. Hmm, I'm not seeing anything. So, I'm not sure what to think of that, even though this paper was a thinner weight than that. Okay, it's still on. I got a little bite, so let's try again. I don't know if I am going too fast. I'm not giving the foil time to actually melt or transfer, however it actually does, onto the paper. So I'll try again. Just a flamingo, I think, came out wonderful. Okay, let's take another pink. Hmm. Not liking it. There's a little bit more, but I'll show you. Take the card off the work spot. It's not coming through. So that's very disappointing. Um, you know what I will do? I will continue. I'll continue on. And what I am doing while doing this is I am making an imprint on the foil. Then perhaps I could do that directly from foil to paper the way the stamping on the uh, that's because that's how I did the flamingo where I used the stamp directly onto the foil and then you use the stamp line as your guide and so this will be kind of like the stamp it will give me my line so let's 
go on and I'm going to do the next one, which is love. Do the squirrely. doing this on a Sunday afternoon so I hope everybody is having a nice lovely day or a nice lovely evening depending on when you find this okay, now it doesn't look like anything of the love came through that's disappointing, and I'll do some more experimentation to see. And there is a Facebook group of HSN crafters, and perhaps I'll find or perhaps I'll start a Facebook group for the cordless foil coil pin and see. Plus, I can look and see if people would be corded foil quill pin have any recommendations about the tracing although those points those pins really are built differently than this one but it's worth a check out okay so i'm going to do the last word Okay, let's see if that gave me an imprint. Okay, I think I have a good enough imprint. So I'm going to take the tracing off. Take the washi tape off the paper and I'm going to leave it right where it is so the little splotches that are on there will be the same. Hopefully, we'll see. This may be a in the trash can experiment. Oh, let's see. Yeah. Okay, experiment, experiment. That's all we can do. So I am going to use the impression and use the impression as my guide and let's see what happens. I will go slowly.
think one of the tricks is to keep the pin up, upright, not at an angle. It's just a guess. I won't look to see how it is until I'm completely done. I'm doing well. I don't want to spoil it by being excited about it going well and then screw it up. And if it's going poorly, I don't want to be disappointed and not want to finish. <laughs> little clicking that you may possibly hear on my little solar panel wiggle toys. They're in my window here. Okay, so I am done. Let's see what we have from this experiment. Okay. I'm thinking I need to work on my pressure. Am I going slow? So here's what we've got. And I did not center it very well. Should have brought it up further. But I guess we can call this a failure. Um, but if you don't fail, you'll never learn. So what I think is I need to do some more experimenting with this tracing because they, they have two of it. And I'll look and I'll see if people have success using this um, with the corded pins and how we do with this. So this is thinner paper. Well, yeah, I think it is thinner paper than the copy paper. But um, so there's a couple of things pressure and speed <laughs> you want to go slow and I don't remember I, to me I went slowly you know at all of them but at this part one the top one actually seems to be a little bit better than the others um, and maybe because some of it was already done in my other attempts Although I don't know if I got it quite on mine because there's a little extra like shadow line. But I did fantastic. Well, that's often the way it is with me. I The first time I try something, I do it as if I actually know what I'm doing. And then when I try again, <laughs> I don't have a clue. But I am very excited to play with it more and add touches of, of foil to things because I do think it really does add a really um, a lot of bling to it and I am very excited about it and so this is the We Are Memory Keepers foil quill cordless pen and I do not know where else it is available I bought it on HSN Craft Day but I would imagine that Michael's and Joann's and Hobby Lobby and online retailers either have it already or will be getting it. 
and when you purchase it, it does come with the pen, because in the package, and the two tips and a roll of foil, because this was in the package, so I think they're all packaged that way. And um, takes two AAA batteries that are not included, so you have to add that in, and you put, you take this tip off, and here's how you turn it on and off. Right there, that end. And then up here, when it's cool, you have to wait for it to cool so you don't accidentally touch it. You open up this and, and you put your batteries in and it tells you which way, positive and negative, which way it goes. In fact, right there on the pin is a picture of instructions. So I am very excited to play with this some more. I hope you found this helpful and I wish you a fantastic day. Thank you.